6.33 miles, 8 minutes, 15 seconds per mile. Uh, went out for a run before work today, just trying to keep things nice and relaxed. I had a rest day yesterday. It was an unintentional one. The day kind of got away from me. I had a really unusual day yesterday uh, work-wise, uh, but ended up being a pretty good thing. I'm in the taper, so uh, a little extra rest isn't uh, a bad idea for me. Uh, today, what I really wanted to focus on was tweaking with some of the low light settings for the GoPro. Now I know that there is a low light setting that's available for it, but when I shoot at 1080 and 120 frames per second, that low light feature, whatever it is, it isn't available to me. And I'm not really sure. I tried playing around with some of the settings at 1080 to see what settings would give me the low light option in the GoPro, but it always just keeps saying not available. So I'm not sure what it requires. But what I did do was I turned the ProTune on, which is something I normally turn off for the GoPro. I just, with my workflow, I just want to get a good image straight out of the camera and not have to do a lot of color grading or color correcting. Uh, but uh, for the low light tests that I've been doing, I've been extremely unhappy with the way that the GoPro handles low light situations. And when I mean low light situations, I'm not talking about inside a room like this. I'm talking about when it's like pitch black dark outside. So it's not a low light, it's a no light situation for a lot of the runs. I, I understand that. But I do feel like the GoPro Hero 5, and maybe it's just nostalgia, but I felt like the GoPro Hero 5 did a little bit of a better job in the extremely low light or no light situations that I run in. In terms of, I was able to, in post, really crank up uh, the grays and the blacks so that way uh, I can rescue some of the footage. Uh, and because of the way I do prefer the image out of the Hero 7 to the Hero 5, uh, I was thinking that the low light performance would be better too, but I'm thinking that's the trade-off here. I think that's the Achilles heel uh, of the Hero 7. And what I did was I tried to uh, make the shutter speed, instead of having it automatic, I set it to one over 240 because I like to shoot at 120 frames per second. So there's that rule, whatever your frames per second is, just double it. And that's what you should be uh, shooting at in terms of frame rate for a video. Uh, and then uh, I turned the max ISO to, uh, I think 6400 is where I set it at. I'll put it on the side of the screen here so you guys can see all those uh, settings that I messed around with. Uh, and then I turned the, the sharpness down a little bit uh, because I feel like if you have tried to have high sharpness in a high ISO situation, you end up with a lot of noise. All those things put together, I still ended up with a really, really noisy image. And it happened on like my one f like low light favorite spot to shoot at is the one uh, where I'm really far away and I've got a super wide shot. Uh, that one ended up being extremely noisy. I, I might try it again at a 3200 max ISO or maybe even a 1600 ISO or maybe even 800 ISO. Um, but that was just incredibly noisy. And then just some of the shots that I have along the lakefront trail where I'm running towards like a street lamp, those two just seemed really, really grainy. And so uh, I, I was very disappointed. Uh, the ultimate goal is, even though I do have to still carry this phone around with me for now, ultimately uh, I do want to test getting LTE uh, enabled on my Apple Watch so I can not need to have an iPhone with me when I run. Uh, but for now, I still need to have the iPhone with me. I don't need to, but I still have the iPhone with me a lot of times because I'm run commuting or because I want to listen to music. But I don't want to have to shoot with it in the wintertime. Uh, the main reason for that being uh, I've been running with just the GoPro or at least shooting with just the GoPro ever since the Hero 7 came out and I've been really happy with it. It kind of seems to speed up the workflow. Uh, shooting, getting a shot is just faster with this alligator clip that I use rather than me having to get the iPhone out, put it in the C-mount clip, and then set the, sh the phone down. It just takes longer, it seems, to shoot with this. This is just faster. I can either, I do all my shots either on the run or when I do stop to take a set shot, it's camera down, run in front of it, run back, and then you're up and going again. Uh, and I don't have to worry about, did I get the focus right? Was it focused on the ground six inches in front of the camera or was it focused on me and the scenery? So it, I just prefer to shoot with this. Uh, but I still think that in low light situations, the, the iPhone really does a lot better 
especially in that one shot that I really like where I'm shooting something that's farther away to begin with, uh, the tighter angle on the lens here, I think helps that because then it's not, I don't have to crop in, which is uh, what I did for that initial opening shot from today's video. And uh, I actually took both, uh, took video with both cameras at the same time. So I'll put those side by side now as well. So you can see uh, both from the native image because the GoPro angle is a lot wider than the iPhone. Uh, but then if I try to crop it in uh, to give it somewhat the same kind of shot dimensions, uh, you can really see, uh, you should have been able to see a, a, a difference earlier, but when it's cropped in, you're really going to be able to see the difference in terms of the noise that the GoPro is taking. And granted, I'm not an expert when it comes to tinkering with ISO, uh, but it, I don't really feel like this was an issue that I was having a ton with the Hero 5, or maybe it's just that I understood intuitively more the limitations of the GoPro and I was shooting more with the iPhone at really, really low light. So um, I think that ultimately what I'm gonna still have to do, in addition to tinkering more with some of the settings for low light uh, with the GoPro Hero 7, uh, I still think I'm gonna have to bring uh, this iPhone around with me, uh, especially as we get into the winter months where uh, there's just not as much sunlight and there's a lot of low light and difficult lighting situations. The downside also being that uh, my iPhone, uh, once it gets cold, the battery just is, is miserable. And so uh, I now have uh, an iPhone that I think is about a year, old. maybe it's about a year old. I'm not sure exactly, it's an iPhone 7. So uh, it's not the newest of phones. And my running buddy always has a theory, every time they release a new phone, the battery life on your old iPhone just suddenly starts to die. And he has some you know, historical evidence to back him up on that. Uh, but uh, I anticipate that this winter, uh, battery life is just gonna be terrible on this iPhone in the really cold weather. Uh, I've had situations where I've gone from a fully charged phone in my house, sitting in my chair, and then as soon as I get outside, it's 70%, and then, you know, 10 minutes into the run, it's down to uh, automatically shutting off because it thinks it has zero battery left. So, and then when you come back inside and warm up, it's up to 40 all of a sudden. So uh, the battery does weird things in cold weather. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily an Apple problem. I think it's a lithium ion battery problem, uh, but the GoPro Hero, uh, tends to do a little bit better uh, in terms of uh, battery life and longevity, although it does suffer somewhat of a similar kind of problem. But we'll see how that goes uh, as the temperatures uh, start to drop uh, and we get into more of that hardcore winter run. Not that the hard winter, not that the running is hardcore, but that the, the winter gets more intense. Uh, before I go, uh, I want to talk about today's charity runner for the day. For those of you who are new, what I like to do is I want to try and donate $5 every day to a different charity runner and spotlight them at the end of my videos. Today's charity runner is Nick Affendor. He's out of Orlando. He's a young man, a high school student. He's raising money for a dance marathon. Uh, and so normally uh, I, I wouldn't have, I would have politely said that I can't donate, but as part of his fundraising efforts for the Dance Marathon, which is going to support Children's Miracle Network, which I think is a great organization, uh, he is also going to be running the OUC Half Marathon on December 1st. So that's coming up right after Thanksgiving in about a month uh, and some change from now. And uh, he's going to be using that uh, as a way of getting more people to donate to his Dance Marathon. So he's not directly raising money for the Half Marathon race, but he's using the half marathon as a way to get his donors to donate more to the dance marathon. So I think it counts. And so uh, I've already donated $5 to his cause. I'll put links to his fundraising page in the description uh, so you can take a look at what he's doing. And I hope that you'll consider donating to his cause as well. Uh, that's all I have for today. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Yo, what's going on?